my final welcome here, and uh, thanks a lot for uh, joining us and delivering this session today, Seth. Hey, thanks, Connor. And let me add my welcome to everyone that has joined us uh, on this topic of, of employee engagement. And as, uh, as Connor mentioned, we had over 700 people register for this. So obviously, this is a hot topic in your organization, and uh, it was one of the reasons we decided to put together this webinar on engagement. Next to the topic of accountability, this is one that I'm very passionate about, because I visit uh, uh, many organizations as part of my uh, role within Competitive Solutions. And when I walk into organizations, typically what I see is selective engagement and not collective accountability. And that's really going to be my message today is how do you move people from selective engagement? How do you uh, move some of your low performers, the folks that aren't actively engaged in the business that are not participants, how do you move them along uh, and engage them? I'm going to share, share with you some tools uh, throughout our session today. You'll see on the front slide there Learjet. Learjet um, is a longtime uh, client of ours. We've done a, done a lot of work with them on various topics, one of them being engagement. And some of the tools that I'm going to share with you today, uh, Learjet uses on a day-to-day -day basis to run their business. Uh, last year they um, offered to, to host us and some folks who wanted to come out and, and uh, hear how they run their business, and they've offered that again in, in May. So um, you'll see on there May 9th and 10th, um, and at the end, if you'd like more information on that event, you'll have the opportunity to request it. I found some statistics as I was putting this uh, webinar together about engagement. And not surprising, high, highly engaged employees outperform their peers by as much as 21, 28%. But this statistic really hit me uh, and gave me some, a good data point that organizations with low employee engagement saw an average decline in their operating income of more than a third. Just think about that, how much, how how profitable or how much revenue your organization could generate if you had a highly engaged workforce uh, within your organization. Let's talk about the, the reality that I see today in a lot of organizations and, and some of the pain points I'm going to share with you here, uh, maybe some of the things that your company is struggling with. 75% of the leaders have no engagement plan or strategy, and that really goes to the organization overall, that there's no plan or strategy uh, on how we're going to engage people and how we're going to take our low performers and move them uh, up the ladder, so to speak. Yet 90% of those leaders say engagement directly impacts business success, and it goes back to that slide before about um, uh, operating income of, of more than 32% with that. So what does this bring us? One, it brings us, the lack of engagement brings us a culture of dependency. And what I mean by culture of dependency, I'll share with you an example. Uh, back in November, I was at a, uh, at a site, with, and I was walking down the hall uh, with a manager in the organization, and one of his employees stopped him in the hallway and asked the question. And at the time, it was a very benign question, but to me it spoke volumes about the culture of that organization. The employee asked this, how much vacation do I have left between now and the end of the year? And the response from the leader was this, I don't know, but I will look into it. And we went on our way. That is an issue that a, a employee is perfectly capable of solving themselves, but for those organizations that have a culture of dependency, that's, that is how that issues like that get handled. Selective employee engagement. Think about your organization, your team. You may have 10 people on your team. You've got three people that are highly engaged, you're high performers. Every time you need something done, you go to them. You've got your next tier uh, that are they're somewhat engaged, but they could do a better job. And then you've got some folks that, uh, frankly, they're at the, at the low end of the engagement spectrum. And really what's happening is, they're creating frustration among the team because your high performers are saying, why am I working nine, ten hours a day and I'm making basically the same amount of money as some of the people, members of my team that aren't working hard, that are not engaged in the business. So at the end of the day, what you've got is you've got the poor performers really setting the engagement expectations of that team because some of your high performers and the folks in the next tier down are saying, you know, why am I doing this when these people down here are really aren't pulling their weight. They're not engaged, but yet nothing's being done about it. So what I want to, to kind of kick off here is what's my definition of engagement? It's, and if I asked 10 people, what's your definition of employee engagement? I'm probably going to get 10 different answers. Uh, but I want to know, I want to see deliberate demonstrative action. I want to know if people are getting the job done. And when I talk about getting the job done, are they impacting the metrics on their scorecard? Are they completing their actions, their assignments, their tasks on time? Are they taking five, six weeks to get it done? Are they completing them with purpose and then impact on the business goals? And they can answer the question, 
are you winning and are you losing as it relates to the business. And then when they have weekly meetings, staff meetings, folks are participative. You don't have two or three people dominating the conversation. You've got everyone on your team that's participative, that's offering suggestions, opinions on what needs to happen to advance the business. That's my definition of engagement. And uh, as Connor had mentioned, throughout our time together, we're going to uh, have some polls just to get a sense of uh, the participants on our webinar. So Connor, if at this time, if you would launch our poll, uh, our first one on engagement levels within your organization. Okay, about 10 more seconds. All right, thank you everyone. And, and looking at the results, 62% of the folks on our webinar said so-so. About half of us are engaged in the business, so not surprising there. So how do we fix this? How do we create a culture of, of engagement, of highly engaged employees? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to establish it. We need to put in place the foundation for engagement to easily occur. And, and I'm going to share with you a tool later on that will help us start establishing that foundation of it. Then we need to monitor it. And I'm going to share with you later on a way where you can let measure the level of engagement within your team. And it'll provide you great, great data to provide coaching, counseling, mentoring uh, to, to engage people that are likewise not engaged. And then third, we got to sustain it. There's a lot of times we start off down the road of, of trying to do something different. And what we lack is the ability to, to, to sustain it. And one of the things that I see in organizations that help sustain levels of engagement is pub routine public recognition. And I'm not talking about town hall meetings where we're passing out t-shirts and coffee mugs to, to, to half of the folks there. I'm talking about on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis, we're providing uh, routine public recognition, whether it's in a staff meeting uh, that the team members recognize each other, or whether it's a vice president comes down to a specific team, attends that meeting, and says, hey, I want to recognize John, and I want to recognize Michael, because they stayed late Friday night when our servers went down. They were here till 10 o'clock, but they got them back up and running. So when we all came back to work Monday morning, we were up and running. That's the type of, of recognition that people really want, the intangible, informal, that doesn't cost anything. But what it does is when you do it in public like that, it makes the people that receive recognition good, but also other members of the team now see what are the behaviors that leadership is looking for, what are the things I, I can do or I need to do to get that type of recognition. So how do we establish it, monitor, and sustain it? Well, I believe and my, and my company believes we got to utilize a tool called an action register. And here are some of the things I'm going to cover as we talk about uh, the action register. I'm going to talk about how, how the action register can help break the culture of dependency, how it's going to go drive collective engagement teamwork, getting everyone aligned and on the same page. We're going to talk about how it brings visibility to, to accountability. And one of the things I've learned about the topic of accountability is not only employees love the concept of accountability, because not only are they being held accountable, their peers are being held accountable. And when I talk about that, remember the three tiers at the beginning, your high performers, ones in the middle, and the ones at the end. Everyone's being held accountable, but also the leader is being held accountable. So I think sometimes we think accountability is a, is a, is a scary word. But really what happens is I see everyone jumps on board and they really like that concept of it. The action register eliminates ignorance as an excuse. How many times have you attended a meeting? And I see it all the time in the meetings that I attend for my client companies. People will say, um, I don't know what you're talking about. We've never talked about that. Well, if we documented it one, the first time on our action register when it came up, we wouldn't be talking about it again and again. It helps us remove ignorance as an excuse. And then it raises the bar and expectations that hey, I expect you to complete this action by this target date, as opposed to uh, letting the target dates continue to slip and slip, and that really becomes the culture with that. So what does an action register look like? Here's our simple action register template that we use here at Competitive Solutions and that we introduce into the companies that we work with. This is designed to document critical tasks, ownership responsibilities, and target dates. So let me talk, talk through this real briefly. The action, what someone needs to do or someone has been assigned to do or volunteered to do. And when you're in a meeting and you hear terms such as, 
I will, someone should, let's do this. Those are action terms. And I want to see at every meeting someone's designated as the action keeper, the person uh, that is responsible for writing down the, the critical assignments and tasks during the meeting. And in a minute, I'll tie that back together. My rule of thumb on an action is this. I want to be able to go back a year from now and know exactly what that action was. So I want it to be as specific as possible. And if it takes a half a page to write that action, I'm OK with that. But check with IT a year from now. No one is going to know what that means. But if it says check with IT about releasing the new laptops for our new employees, we will know what that means. Next column is owner. This is the person that must complete the action by a predefined by, by the target date. I don't want to see the team under the owner. I don't want to see to be determined. I don't want to see three different names of uh, Karen, Randy, and Michael because here's what happened. All three of them will think the other person is going to get that action done. A singular name is in the owner column, the target date. And there's some actions that will take that, that, that will take 20 minutes to complete, and the target date's next week. There are other actions maybe two weeks or a month out. But I want a target date on there. What's the original target date? So we can start tracking accountability, and we can start tracking the level of engagement. Because in a minute, uh, I'm going to show you how we're going to measure that. So if you've got an employee whose the target date was January 21st, here it is March 28th, they still haven't completed that action on time, that should be a pretty good indicator to you. They're not engaged. The completion date, when was that action actually completed by? And then the comment field. I want a history there. Maybe the target date was missed, but the reason the target date was missed was because our supplier or somebody was on vacation didn't return the phone calls in a timely manner. Let's have a history in there about that action uh, and when it was completed or in why that target date potentially may have been missed. Let me show you an action register from an actual client company. This is uh, what I'm showing you here is an on-demand software we have called PBL Scorecard. Some of our clients utilize this. And what you'll see is the actions that they're working on. The red ones are past due, and then the yellow ones are due in the next seven days. Uh, and then the white ones due in the future. You'll see the action. What does it apply to? Uh, does it apply to a metric on their scorecard, or does it apply to, to the team specifically? Responsibility. Again, one person is listed, and then the target date and comments and so forth. So that's a true action register right there that drives that performance, that drives that engagement within your organization. Let's transition to talk about some ways we can utilize the action register to improve our meetings. I'm a big believer every meeting has got to have an action register in there, and you've got a designated action keeper. What the benefits for you are around that are going to be is this. One, you're going to have shorter, more focused meetings. You'll only talk about something the first time. You won't be sitting there thinking to yourself, we talked about this two weeks ago, we're talking about it again, and I'm sure next week we'll talk about it again. You talk about things one time, they get put on the action register. It eliminates those repeated discussions. It helps leaders track what employees are doing. Again, it provides a good representation of the workload that people have, how participative and how engaged they are within the business. And then finally, with your meetings, it increases follow through on rates and assignments. Because there is a belief out there that, hey, I know my manager. I know he or she is really busy. And I know that he or she asked me to do this. And I also know this. They're not going to follow up with me on that. So why should I follow through on completing that task? And that's where we, people plead ignorance and they get out of accountability. And you, that's the reason your levels of engagement organizations are low. Document it. Put it on the action register. Bring visibility to commitments and assignments around that. In your organization, when you utilize the action register for your team meetings, and I've got a, a sample agenda here. Um, that, that I put in, in companies I work with. But you're going to look at your action register twice. You're going to look at, at it when you start your meeting at 2 o'clock, and you're just going to go through the actions that are due that day. We're not going to go through and, and get status updates on actions that are due next week, next month, three months from now, because that's where your meeting is going to go out, get off the track, so to speak. Just review the actions that are past due or due that day. And that may be simple as, as this. Um, Kathy, you were going to check with IT about the new laptop being released for our new employees. What did they say? Here's what they said. Thank you. Next action is for Will. Will, you were going to check with um, HR about the new 401k plan. If we could now buy stocks in addition to mutual funds, what they say? Here's what they said. It takes about two minutes to go through the action register and, 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 and uh, clear off the ones that are due that day or past due and move on forward. So then you can talk about your scorecard. You can do around the table. That's another engagement piece where you give people the opportunity to 
uh, raise issues, concerns, ask questions in a, in a public forum with the manager, the leader there. Recognition, again, it's that mental trigger. Pass up, pass down. That's a part of a communication process I talked about last month in the communication webinar, and those webinars can be found uh, on our website. So if you're interested in, in learning more about how to increase communication, listen to that one. You'll hear me talk a lot about the pass up, pass down. But the, we're going to look at our action register a second time at the end of our meeting. This is going to be our last agenda item. Uh, and what we're doing here is we are just validating the actions we just took. We're assigning ownership. We're assigning target dates. And what I tell people is I literally want you to go around the table and say, Blair, you've agreed to do this by this date. Yes. Michael, you have agreed to do this by this target date. Yes. Get that verbal affirmation. Again, remove ignorance as an excuse within your team as it relates to that. So. Another way uh, for engagement with your teams is around your scorecard. And so having an action register with your scorecard does a couple things. One, corrective action, I'll show it to you in just a second. Corrective action is linked directly with your scorecard, metrics result resulting in higher performance. So what I really want companies to do is I want you to look at your scorecard not as a thermometer, which just tells you the temperature, but look at it as a thermostat. So you're measuring, but for every metric that's red, You've got to come up with a corrective action plan on what, what, what we're going to do differently. And what I don't want is I don't want the manager or the leader or someone that's been, been removed for the past week because they've been in meetings, checking emails, so forth. I don't want them telling the team what they need to do differently, whether if it relates to quality or customer service or, or productivity. I want that team to come together, all 10 members of that team. I want them to collectively come together to discuss why is our quality number what it is? And what are the behaviors we need to do this week, this month, to drive it positive? Let the team talk about it. Let them come up. Because there's another way you're engaging everyone on your team. And some companies, they, what they'll do is they, have, they, they call it stand-ups. Folks just stand together, and they look at the scorecard, and they talk about what do we need to do. Another way to engage your employees with that. And then by having it on your, your scorecard, having a scorecard, and then putting actions on the action register, you're driving that continuous improvement mindset. Employees are now looking for ways, because there's a forum, so employees are now looking for ways that we can get better as an organization. We can get better as a team. What are some behaviors that we can do differently that's going to positively impact our business? Let me show what that looks like again. Here's our on-demand software. So you'll see here's a scorecard from, from, one of our, uh, from a team right here, and you'll see they've got a problem with their supplier defects, and they have a delivery problem. And that team has come together, they've diagnosed the issue, and they've come up with, with solutions on here's what they're going to do differently to drive that business forward, that continuous improvement mindset. Having the team talk about their performance, their metrics, their KPIs is another way that you can engage your workforce. I'm going to pause here. Connor, if you would uh, uh, launch our second poll around the action register, please. Ten more seconds. All right. Well, good. Well, some of y'all are are actually utilizing the action register, and that's great to hear. And for the folks that aren't, I certainly hope uh, if you one of the takeaways from this is that you will uh, begin implementing an action register within your organization. This is called a personal action register, and this is something that. Um, not every company we work with utilizes this, but we do uh, occasionally come across companies that, that have what I talked about earlier, that culture of dependency where um, employees believe and need and feel like every time there's an issue uh, or a question, and, and by the way, the employee probably already knows the answer to the question. It's just going to get validation from a leader or an issue comes up, again, already knows what to do but need, feels the need to go to the leader that they use these personal action registers. So let's go back to my example before about the vacation. Uh, the employee asking, the companies that utilize this, these, these are designed to fit in your pants pocket. The leader would pull it out, would listen to the issue that the employee's uh, presenting around. I understand you want to know how much vacation you have left. 
here's what I want you to do. I want you to go down to payroll and benefits. I want you to ask for Jamie. Jamie can help you with that. That all is written down in the action column there under responsibility for under R for responsibility. The employee's name is there, the target date. The leader may say, I will follow up with you tomorrow uh, at 5 p.m. And he, the leader rips off the, the copy, the top copy, gives it to the employee, and then the leader keeps the duplicate copy of that. And what you see in companies that utilize this is leaders periodically going through the day looking at, looking at their target column, who do I need to follow up with? These pads typically have a life cycle of about 9 to 12 months in companies. Because after that time, employees now know that they are empowered to solve their issues themselves and they don't need to get the leader involved. So it breaks that, that cycle of dependency and it provides opportunities for coaching. It's like, and I saw it at a, at a client site back in January where an issue came up and the leader took the time to coach the employee on, on, the, on the issue and said, hey, this is what I need you to do differently. I want you to go out and, um, and, and talk to so-and-so get that issue resolved right then and there. Very powerful tool with that. So let's let's talk about a, a, another tool that we've got, in, and this is kind of the measurement piece that I talked to you about uh, earlier, is the accountability analysis. So what this does is displays tangible, measurable representation of employee engagement. What I've done is I've taken my action register for my team for the last 90 days, and I've written my employees' names, uh, the folks who report to me in the left column, the next column is the number of actions that they've been assigned, volunteered for. And then the third column is how many have they completed. And then the fourth column is the value to the business. And what this provides me with is it t as a leader, it tells me how am I doing as a leader? Am I actively engaging? But for the employees, it shows what's the level of engagement within the team. So here's that accountability analysis right here. So you can see, you can look at it. And immediately it jumps out at you, hey, Shane's my high performer, uh, Gwen is my high performer, Lynn is my high performer as well. But as a leader, I need to do a better job because I'm giving all the assignments and tasks or they're volunteering for all those assignments and tasks. So I may say to Shane and to Gwen and to Linda, hey, I don't want you to volunteer for anything for the next 30, 60 days because I need other people on the team to step up. And, and Shane and uh, Gwen and Linda are saying, oh, that is excellent, I'm so overworked, I'm so overloaded. And then as a leader, I need to go to Anna and to Patricia and to John and say, hey, the last 90 days, you really haven't been engaged and partic participative in our team. Here's the data that, that, that shows me that. So what I'm really going to do the next 90 days is I'm going to work with you, I'm going to coach you and, and, and engage you in the business, and I'm hoping that you'll be part of this team. Conversely, Anna and Patricia and John see this and they say, you know, this, this accountability we're talking about, this employee engagement culture they're trying to establish, this, this is real. This is sticking. So I need to, one, I need to become more participative. I need to be a better member of my team, higher level of engagement, or maybe it's time for me to look for a job elsewhere because this isn't what I want to do with that. So it's a powerful tool. And by the way, the first time you do this, you don't even need to put the names of your employees in the, in the left column. You can just post uh, column two, three, and four. And what will happen is people will know. People say, that's Shane, and oh, I know that's Anna because she doesn't do anything. And that's, that's got to be Adam because he volunteers for all the easy actions. You don't even need to publish it. Just put it out there. Say, hey, here's the level of engagement of our team the last 90 days. People are going to know. They'll know exactly what it's about and what it means. I'm going to pause here. Connor, will you please launch our third and final poll for us? Ten more seconds. There you go. Thanks, Connor. And uh, the majority of you like the uh, the action register is a beneficial tool for your team. Let me wrap up now um, and, and bring this kind of to a conclusion. 
in, in my 16 years of doing this, if you want true employee engagement, utilize an action register with that because you'll have more meaningful meetings. Uh, people will be, in, be looking forward to going to a meeting because they'll know it's outcome driven. It, there's actions being taken. People are doing what they say they're going to do. Use the score. Use the action register with your scorecard to really move uh, the meter, so to speak, to go from red to green to increase your results with that. Increase follow through and, and, and uh, elevate expectations of all your team members. The accountability analysis will show you right then and right then and there. Hey, who is engaged, and who do I need to work? Who do I need to coach with? The personal action register may not be for everyone on this webinar, but it's a tool that will help you empower employees, eliminate that dependency on the leader that we see so many times. And, and a lot of leaders just feel like they're constantly getting dumped on and dumped on. I call it the management dumpster. Uh, so it'll eliminate the dependency on that. And it will provide great coaching opportunities to, to set, hey, 10, 15 minutes, say, hey, let, let me talk to you about this. Let me help you so you, next time this comes up, you can, ha you can help yourself and help, your, help the team uh, with this item. Cannot emphasize enough how powerful a quarterly accountability analysis can be because it, it brings visibility to everyone on the team, the levels of engagement. Who are the high performers? Who are the ones in tier two? And then ones, who, are the, who are the lowest ones? And as a leader, it provides a, a data point. It's not the only data point, but it's a good data point for performance reviews to say, hey, your performance review, this is your, your grade based on this and this. And oh, by the way, the accountability analysis to measure that level of engagement. And then as a leader, you know, it, it's incumbent upon the leader to be the person champion this, this culture of engagement because, because ultimately what's going to happen is the leader is going to be able to, to step back and do some more strategic things for the business uh, instead of having to actively trying to engage everyone on his team. So it's going to provide uh, more opportunities around uh, mentoring and coaching. I want to thank everyone for being with us today. Connor, we've got about two minutes left. Did we have any questions that came in during our time together? Oh, absolutely. Lots of great ones here. And we had a few on the accountability analysis slide. Um, and, and one in particular is how do you come up with the, the value scores, the one, two, and three scores for, for determining you know, value to the business? Yeah, absolutely. And I didn't really touch on that because that's a, that takes, don't have enough, enough time to really fully cover that topic. But one of the things that I see companies do is that as they assign actions, they, they assign a value to it, one, two, or three, one through five, one through ten, with a one being an action that's very simple, not complex, may take 15 to 20 minutes, may mean attending a meeting or a conference call, uh, where a, a action at the three or a five or ten, a much higher number, that's something more strategic. And maybe something around writing a new policy or developing a new process. So I just like to, to have a number assigned to the value to the business. So as we're looking at, again, at our levels of engagement, making sure that everyone is engaged and people are given the opportunities to, to do the simple ones, the ones, but then also the, the strategic ones, the threes with that. So that's, that's the subjective piece. I do like to see agreement between members of the team and the leader on what's the number going to be assigned so that um, Susie doesn't say, well, my action was basically the same, and you gave it a one, yet for Dave you gave it a three. Uh, one more question, Connor? Okay. Uh, another one came in about the action register, and, and someone asked, you know, what if you have something that needs to get done and you want to create an action, but the person that should be doing it is not in that meeting or they're not part of that team, uh, what do you do in that situation? Yeah, absolutely, and that's going to happen. There's going to be people that are on vacation, that are, are traveling, uh, and they're the subject matter expert. They're the person with the best skill set to get that action completed, done, completed on time. I'd mentioned under owner of one name. I'm okay if, that, in this instance, if the, the subject matter expert, the person with the best skill set is not there, putting that person's name down, we'll put Vince's name down as the person to get that action done, but then we're going to put Marissa's name, and Marissa was in the meeting, and she's on the team. Marissa is just as accountable as Vince to getting that, making sure that action gets done. So when Vince comes back to work, whether he's been traveling or on vacation, Marissa sits down with him and says, hey, Vince, we assigned you this action. Here's the context of the conversation. We believe you're the best person to get that done on time. So that's how I would handle that. Folks, again, thanks for joining us today. Uh, just remember, every Tuesday we do our Tuesday tips. Uh, next month we'll be talking about motivating uh, multi-generational teams. All of our webinars are archived on our website. So if you want one on scorecards, uh, more effective communication meetings in your organization, or this one, this one, as Connor said, will be available tomorrow. 
and then finally you'll get an exit survey asking you some questions. Um, and if you're interested in, in touring Learjet, and Learjet's doing a lot of great things, they utilize the action register, they have scorecards. If you're interested in, in attending that seminar and then the second day doing a behind the scenes tour with them um, and asking questions of, of their, their leadership team on how they run their business, I certainly hope you request that, that, that coupon code. It's a, code. It's a great opportunity uh, to learn. And we've got about, uh, I think, nine or ten spots left currently. So it's May 9th and 10th in Wichita. Thank you very much, everyone. Look forward to speaking with you next month on multi-generational teams.